Thanks for listening to Gossip with Celebrity, brought to you by Celebrity.com. This week, we talk about the Royals. Our user feedback is from our Spotify listeners, and we end with our weekly feature, the comments of the week. The stories, photos, and tweets we talk about can be found at Celebrity.com slash podcast under episode 109. Hi, I'm Katie, the founder and editor of Celebrity.com, and I write a Celebrity. And I'm Chandra, I'm the head writer for Celebrity, and I write as Kaiser. So we took two weeks off for Thanksgiving, so thanks for waiting for us, not that you had a choice. And (laughs) we're going to have episodes out for the next two weeks, and then we're going to be off on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, which are both on Saturdays this year. Which sucks because you get more time off when they're on the weekdays. But I know it feels like it doesn't even count. Like Christmas doesn't even count because it's on a Saturday, and that's like the one day we get off. So. But we'll take a little time around the holidays, and we'll publish less, and there's less gossip and stuff. You can cut this out if you want. Okay. But for next week's episode, when we're recording next week, should we do like a best of the year? I don't know. I don't want to work on it. I don't want to work on it. <laughs> All right. I mean, this year sucked like on a lot of levels. We had some gossip high points, though. We should be grateful. I know, especially the celebrities are always like, be grateful and count your blessings and blah, blah, blah. Well, for that, we have to work at it. Let's just talk next week and then maybe the week after, because the week after is the last one. Is that good? No, I thought we were just doing two weeks. No, we're doing two more no. weeks and then we get two weeks off. We'll have episodes out for the next two weeks because they're going to listen to this one first. (laughs) Let me look at the calendar. Yeah, I I just looked at it too. (laughs) It's like every podcast lately is us starting out with like a calendar fight. (laughs) Yeah, but I look at it and write it down first and then you're like, no, but a couple times you've been right too. You have been right a couple times for sure. And it's just like a communication thing of I think that one week counts and you're counting the next week yeah anyway. because you have to assume people are listening to us when i'm saying it to <laughs> us it's three weeks but to them it's two all right so we're gonna get a technical upgrade on the site this weekend and that's gonna be sunday morning you guys should see it so the comments are gonna work a little different for you we didn't change the design or anything yet and if that does happen it's gonna be just as easy to use because that is my thing so many sites change stuff and it's like what happened what's so different but right now it's just for us and you'll see the comments are a little bit different so hopefully that'll be fine if it's not we'll go back (laughs) 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 oh my god the big debacle was like three years ago we tried to upgrade and it ruined everything but we've done a couple tests so i don't want to talk about it or jinx it but yeah everything will be fine (laughs) <laughs> yeah everything will be fine okay. yeah let's hope so you've gone to the movies a lot or you rented them over thanksgiving yeah i've only been in the theater once this year and that was to see spencer and i kind of regret it <laughs> <laughs> i mean spencer isn't a bad movie at all yeah i just wish i had just waited until i rented it i think i would have enjoyed it more just from the comfort of my own home but i okay. had the theater to myself Just randomly, because I went to a matinee and no one else was there. How long was it? It's like a two-hour movie. Okay. Kristen Stewart is very good in it, but she's not in any way Diana. She doesn't sound like Diana. She doesn't look like Diana. She doesn't (laughs) walk like Diana. But it's a standalone. It's a good movie. They really leaned hard into like horror tropes. So that was oh. kind of interesting. Are there jump scares and stuff like that? <laughs> yeah. The music was very horror. Creepy. And she kept on having these like visions. She saw ghosts. Well, Ooh. one ghost in particular of Anne Boleyn. That's not a spoiler. Maybe I like it. Maybe I like it. Because if it's horror, <laughs> I like horror. Yeah, it's very moody. Okay. Don't go into it expecting a royal biopic. It's not that at all. Okay. So yeah, I saw Spencer. My favorite movie that I've seen in recent weeks is Cruella. I did not see that when it first came out. I haven't seen that I loved it. Okay. Emma Stone is great in it, and so is Emma Thompson. I went in with zero expectations, and I think it's one of the best movies of the year. Okay, I'll watch that. Sounds cute. 
it was so cute, but it was at several points in the movie, I was like, I cannot believe that this is a Disney movie. I cannot Ooh. believe that they marketed this to little girls. <laughs> and it's not like it was, you know, oh, sexual or anything like that. It was very goth, at times very dark. It was great. Okay, that's why you liked it, because it appealed to the goth in you. Yeah, definitely. I saw The Eyes of Tammy Faye. I went into that with low expectations as well. Mm -hmm. Jessica Chastain kind of oversold it, I think. Yeah, she did. Yeah, She was too heavy into like, oh, this is my chance for Oscar. She was great in it. Okay. She was really good. And Andrew Garfield was great as, what's his face, Baker? Jim. Yeah, Jim, Jim Baker. Yeah. Vincent D'Onofrio was unrecognizable as Jerry Falwell. Yeah, I saw he was in it because I was looking for pictures of him at the Unforgivable premiere and he wasn't there, but he went to the premiere for Eyes of Tammy Faye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did a, a, some promotion for that, I remember. Mm -hmm. He went to some film festivals. Yeah, and I saw Passing. Okay, I heard that was good. Did you like that? Yeah, Tessa Thompson and Ruth Naga. Both the women were great. Okay. I thought the story was a little short on plot, <laughs> and it could have been shorter. It would have really worked as a short film, I thought. It was a really short story. Yeah. A lot of my Zoom <laughs> friends saw it, or read it, and said it was really short. Yeah, I don't know how or why Rebecca Hall thought that she could finesse that into a full-length movie, because there wasn't enough there. Okay. But it was good. What was there was good. Nice. I watched... A Danish Christmas horror series called Elves. <laughs> <laughs> they're like little 25 minute episodes. I'm pretty sure there's six of them. And it was perfect because you could turn your brain off and watch it. And it was scary, but not horrifying and really easy to watch. So I like that. Was it subtitled? Yeah. Like sometimes I watch it in the original language. And sometimes I watch it dub because then I can be on my phone or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. And then I watched a K-drama that wasn't subtitled. It was by the creator of Squid Game, and it was called Miss Granny. And that was adorable. It was nothing like Squid Game. Like, it wasn't scary or anything. And like a lot of K-dramas, it was hilarious. It was about this elderly lady who kind of lost her purpose in life, but she became magically young. It was so cute. <laughs> I liked that a lot. But other than that, I mean, I have been watching like competition shows and stuff because I don't really want to think. I just am having a hard time lately and I, I don't want to have anything too serious or dark, you know. Yeah, I don't mind the art films. I prefer the art films rather than like, I still haven't seen The Eternals. Oh, me either. We can't rent that yet either. It's only in theaters. And that's a long time to sit in a fucking theater. Like, I'll go <laughs> see a movie. I've been to the theater three times since COVID. My main criteria mm -hmm. right now is how long is this damn movie? And if it's an hour and a half or less, I'll go. Or maybe two hours. But anything over that. And I've heard Eternals is just bloated. Yeah, it's like three hours long, I think. Yeah, forget that. No. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and plus, I'm the kind of person who just prefers to rent anyway. So. Yeah, I do too. I feel like The Last Duel is about to come out. We can rent that in probably a week or two. Yeah, I'll rent that because it's supposed to be good, but the plot and the idea of it is kind of turns people off, but at least it had a woman as a script writer. Right. But yeah, it's supposed to be good, so I'll rent that. I'll share it with you. Unlike when you rented Eyes of Tammy Faye, you didn't share it with me. You should let me know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what you have and haven't seen because you're always watching movies. So Okay, that's fair. I don't mean to be rude, but I was like, oh, why didn't she share that? I would have watched it. No, sorry. No, it's okay. I mean, I have your password. You have my password. <laughs> so I should have just <laughs> looked it up. I should have just logged in as you. All right, let's talk about the Royals. So while we were off, Duchess Megan did that interview with Ellen. Like, that was amazing that we got to see her. It had been so long since we'd saw her. We had barely any notice of it. Like, a day before we heard, and we are like, ooh. And she was much better than, I, I mean, I already like her a lot, but I didn't expect her to be as good as she was. Like, she's just a natural. Yeah, she was very, I mean, you could tell that she's a television actress and that she's done promotion before and that yeah. she's been on you know tv shows before she knows how to perform 
as a talk show guest. Yeah, the actual interview was very cute, and Ellen just gave her a chance to you know tell her stories and that yeah. sort of thing. I thought the skit part of it, where she's using the earpiece, the earwig, to talk to other people, <laughs> I thought that went on just way too long. That was cringy, but, but that's not her fault, and it kind of showed that she's game to do that. Yeah, she's game, and she's a giant dork. She is. She is. She's so cute. And <laughs> she'll just do whatever. She's like, okay. And, I mean, once again, the funniest part of it was Megan does something very innocuous, very sweet and kind and dorky and whatever, and the British media freaks the fuck out. They act like she's committing a war crime. <laughs> <laughs> They act like she, you know, killed a bunch of dogs. You know, it's just Aww. horrible. The way they talk about anything she does. Yeah. They panic in advance. Then they go full throttle at her once one little interview comes out. Yeah, they're outrageous and dumb. We got two kind of exposés about the royals this week. One was the documentary on the BBC called The Princes and the Press, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And the other one was a new book by an American author named Christopher Anderson. It's called Brothers and Wives Inside the Private Lives of William, Kate, Harry, and Meghan. And there's not a lot of new information in there, but he puts a different spin on existing information that we already had. And I didn't have a read on the book or the royal guy, Christopher Anderson, at all. I mean, I've seen his name mentioned before, especially in the Daily Beast. The Tom Sykes quotes him a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. I never really understood if he was like in the pocket of Kensington Palace or Clarence House or anything like that. He's only been doing promotion in America. He hasn't tried to do any promotion, you know, any interviews with British publications. So that's suspicious to me. It feels just like he's selling a certain kind of royal gossip to Americans who haven't been paying attention to what's actually been happening. Oh, that's a good point. I got the best understanding of it. Of course, I've been reading your coverage. And today's story that you covered about his interview with the Daily Beast kind of brought it all home to me, what he's trying to do. Yeah, that was enlightening. That interview was more enlightening than all of the book excerpts and his Today Show interview and everything else. That was Tom Sykes kind of like saying, well, what are you really saying? You know, who is the racist here? And As Anderson was trying to make excuses for the royal family, he made it sound like Meghan walked into a situation where everyone was racist, where the institutional racism was overwhelming, where everyone she encountered saw her as strange and exotic and terrible. Angry. And... Yeah, he said that Prince Charles was the royal racist who asked about the baby's skin color, who Meghan and Harry mentioned in the Oprah interview but didn't name, but that it was innocent. And that William backed him up, saying it wasn't racist, it was tactless. But it did sound racist the way he told it. So, yeah. Yeah, his whole story that, like, everything that happened in the past four years the root of it was Charles asking an innocent question about what Harry and Meghan's children would look like in November 2017. That makes zero sense. It it makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know why he's so hell-bent on selling that version, Anderson. But he also admitted in the excerpts of the book that we saw that Charles and William gaslighted Harry when he told him not to be racist about Megan. Right. Told him he was being oversensitive, which is a very typical abuser tactic. When you bring up issues that you have with their behavior, they tell you it's your fault because you're too sensitive. And yeah, that makes it seem like, which we know already, that Harry Megan's version is accurate. They went through all that. Right. And I mean, I trust what Harry said in the Oprah interview that This was something that someone close to him, someone in his family, said directly to him. This was not palace whispers. Yeah. Harry has been torn up about what his family did to Meghan. Legitimately torn up. And he knows that a lot of this shit is racist. And everything they've done to them to respond to this totally vindicates what he said. Because they're (laughs) acting like abusers. (laughs) Yep. 
So the Princes in the Press is that two-part documentary on BBC. And before it came out, they were freaking out about it. So it's about how the palaces were briefing against Harry and Meghan you know, during the time they decided to leave. We haven't watched it yet. It's only airing in England. I tried to use a VPN to watch it on BBC it's website, but they kind of detected my VPN. I guess they're technically advanced like that and wouldn't let me watch it. But we're going to watch it, you know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll get access to it. Yeah, maybe it'll get put on YouTube, both parts, I would hope. Well, not if we don't watch anything that is bootlegged. Yeah. <laughs> we do not. So um, just a, a note about the freak out in advance from Kensington Palace mm -hmm. in particular. It is so fucking funny. And it took us days to figure this out. The journalist who did the BBC documentary, mm -hmm. his name is Amal Rajan. He dotted every I and crossed every T. He went to the palaces and asked them for contributions. He said, you know, you can have your spokesperson come and talk to me. He's oh, wow. been working on this for two years. Kensington Palace was freaking out because he wouldn't let the palace see the completed documentary beforehand. That's what the issue was. Okay. He did ask them to contribute and they didn't right. do shit. And that's how Megan's lawyer appeared on it because he went to the Sussexes and said, do you want to issue a comment? And she sent her lawyer. Megan nice. sent her lawyer. Very good. We heard a bunch of stories about how mad they were about this before it came out. Again, even though they were asked to contribute. And then representatives from all three, from the Queen, William, and Charles, issued a statement ahead of it saying that a free, responsible, and open press is of vital importance to a healthy <laughs> democracy. However, too often overblown and unfounded claims from unnamed sources are presented as facts, and it is disappointing when anyone, including the BBC, gives them credibility. It's like they're stopping their feet. Yeah, and what's funny about that is all too often overblown and unfounded claims from unnamed sources. Rajan used named sources. He put people on camera and put their names up there. These were not unnamed sources. These were people talking on camera. And the palaces are saying, oh, no, no one cares about them. They, they are nameless, unnamed sources. The unnamed sources are the people briefing against Harry and Meghan. Exactly. Which were unveiled From by the this palace. documentary. Yes. Yeah. So we heard that Kate and William were going to pull this half-ass Christmas special, whatever it's going to be about, because I don't think they know yet either that Kate's <laughs> hosting. They pulled that from the BBC, and it's going to air on ITV now. But who knows how much of that is true, because it's being produced by BBC Studios still. I don't think they can change the producer. It's just they seem like they were freaking out over it. And, well, we're not yeah. going to work with the BBC anymore. Please. <laughs> it was hilarious, though, because apparently the BBC didn't even want the program. <laughs> Will and Kate were already negotiating with ITV for ITV to present it. They're yeah. so dumb. <laughs> And they hadn't even announced the Christmas, I think it's Christmas caroling or something, you know, like Christmas singing. It's so vague and uninteresting, <laughs> like everything they do and half-assed. You know, Kate just sort of waltzed in and said, I'd like to do a Christmas program. And then she walked out. <laughs> so before the documentary came out, William's aides denied that he ever briefed to the press, mm -hmm. which... Like, multiple times, well, we didn't brief to the press. Well, you're briefing to the press now, right? Yeah. yeah, unnamed sources close to William were briefing the press about how he never briefed the press. <laughs> and then, <laughs> all right, we heard also that William got the BBC to make changes to the second half, which was about the Sussexes leaving. It was the subtitled Sussex. It. I believe that. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like that did happen. Because Kensington Palace didn't do shit on Monday, the day after the second part aired. I came into work expecting, you know, another day full of drama from William throwing a tantrum. Yeah. I think they edited some shit out at the last minute. And they said they were going to do that. Their lawyers were on standby, was the... Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. And then they're trying to claim that William didn't give Jason Knopf permission to leak the stories about Megan bullying staffers. You know, it was William's fucking idea. 
Well, we don't know that it was William's idea. We do know that William was involved. I still wonder how much of it was William's idea and how much of it was Jason Knopf. Jason Knopf thinks that he's the kingmaker. He thinks that he's the voice in William's ear. No, that's Kate. (laughs) Yeah, well, Kate thinks that she is the kingmaker, but Kate is not. She literally is. (laughs) Yeah. um, (laughs) William has made it abundantly clear that he's fine with Kate as long as she just stays quiet and raises the kids. Yeah. That's all he cares about. Jason Knopf is making some sort of power play, and he's he's doing a terrible job of it. And he's making William look like a clown, and he's making himself look like a clown. It doesn't take much with William. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't. Well, none of these people are rocket scientists, you know? They're all fucking idiots. Dumb as a box of hair. They are. So we talked about this on Zoom, and this is Amira and Karen. If there was no Jason Knopf, what would Will do? It's just funny how now they're throwing him under the bus like, well, William never authorized him to release those emails. You know, we had nothing to do with that. The only reason they're doing that is because he's leaving. William is just so obviously stupid. I just cannot get over how stupid he is. And Charles and all his faults is very methodical. You know, Charles is playing chess and William's playing checkers. And then trying to downplay the whole skin color thing. And it's just like, really? And the way William keeps trying to throw Charles under the bus, he keeps yeah. trying. But it's like, it doesn't work for me. All it's doing is going, oh, you're the one who said that. Yeah, he, the his one fingerprints who said are all over it because he was so taken aback that the queen had removed their pictures during her annual Christmas. I'm like, his fingerprints were all over that. He was probably the one who told her to take those photos down oh, yeah. in the first place. So, yeah, I mean, they're dumb. And it looks like they're involved with this book a little bit, at least. But I do believe William was involved with that brother's book. The Christopher Anderson book? Yeah, yeah, like Amir and Karen were saying. It's hard to say. Honestly, I don't think Anderson's sources are all that. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I have no idea. Because it's the same stuff we've been hearing. And it could be just that an American author was like, well, I'm going to take the royal side a little bit and put the spin on it and make some cash. (laughs) So... You know, we could have come up with that shit. Again, like, William is such an idiot. He can't help but leave his fingerprints all over everything. It doesn't read as obviously pro-William, the excerpt I've seen from Anderson's book. Okay. It's more pro-royal in general. Yeah. So we got this great news today that the Mail on Sunday lost their appeal of Megan's successful summary judgment against them. So that's the case... You want to explain that because you wrote this part. And I, <laughs> this is your writing, and I could tell, and it sounds weird coming from my mouth. All right, so Megan filed the lawsuit against the mail in 2019 after they published parts of her letter to her father. And so it's been a two-year legal case. Back in February, she won the summary judgment, which was just basically the judge saying, this doesn't need to go to trial. The facts are self-evident they violated her copyright and you know she wins the case yeah and so the the mail filed an appeal and jason knopf you know leaked some of her emails trying to make her look bad and the mail ran another million headlines about how megan is terrible because she did blah 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 blah. by the way those emails just made her look prepared and professional (laughs) they did not make her look bad at all but go ahead yeah they didn't but Again, Noth only really selected parts of the emails anyway. Yeah. So basically the appellate court, which is just three judges, they said this case is cut and dry. The mail violated her copyright. They had no right to publish this letter. And so she won. So she won. She wrote this really excellent letter about it. You know, she still pulls a little bit, pulls her punches a little bit, but she came for them. She wrote, in the nearly three years since this began, I have been patient in the face of deception, intimidation, and calculated attacks. These harmful practices didn't happen once in a blue moon. They are daily fail that divide us, and we all deserve better. (laughs) There's more in there. That's just a small excerpt. Daily fail. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And it looks like they're going to really appeal this. I'm on the Daily Mail mailing list, and they just published this terribly awful 
editorial by Piers Morgan using this inflammatory language against her, as he always does, saying that they're going to appeal it. And they had another article, which you covered, saying they're going to appeal it. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, the lawyer for the mail said that they're considering an appeal. And the only move for them is either to just take the L and go home or appeal to the Supreme Court. I guess they just want the big loss. The, the Supreme Court telling them, for fuck's sake, go home. You they lost They want to take this. it to trial because they want to compel Megan to take the stand. And right. they, they want to make it a circus so they can yeah. make money off of it and continue to smear her. But like the lawyer's statement was hilariously stupid. It was just like, <laughs> we need to take her to trial for being mean to her dad. Are you even listening oh to yourself? The letter was so nice, too. <sighs> her letter to her father was like, I'm so disappointed in you. You're such a shitty father. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice, though. It was just such a yeah, she said stuff. it in a nice way, but that was yeah. the message. It was, I'm so disappointed in you. Can you stop being such a shitty father? She's got a big <laughs> kindergarten teacher energy. Uh -huh. So let's move on to the user feedback. So the Spotify, like your top listening stuff came out it's top of 2021. I don't use Spotify anymore because I didn't want to pay for it. A bunch of people told us that we were their top podcast on Spotify this year, which is really nice. And I got another email today. So we got four different people who told us. And I wanted to thank Ada, Paula, Laura, and Lauren for that. And also hi to Harena, who's binge listening to us, although she probably won't get to this for a few weeks if she's listening to us in order. <laughs> like if she's listening to us in order. But I wanted to thank everybody. And anybody who wants to join the Zoom, just email me. It's info at celebrity.com. I'll add you to our Zoom mailing list. We meet Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern. Sometimes I get in this mindset of I don't even think that people are even really listening to us. And I then... know. I'm so surprised that people <laughs> listen to us at all. <laughs> I'm like, wow, thanks, you know. But it's nice. It's very nice. It is nice. So we got a question over text from listener Jess. She asks, what were your thoughts about Duchess Kate caught on camera rolling her eyes when asked about Harry and Meghan? People sent me the video a few times on Twitter. Yeah. I mean, she definitely rolled her eyes. Yeah. I'm not 100% believing that the kids repeatedly asked about Harry and Meghan. Like, you can sort of hear someone saying something that sounds like Harry. I'm not sure if the kids did that, really. If that happened, as everyone says it did, that the kids said something and that she rolled her eyes. Yeah, she comes across like a real bitch. <laughs> I like that. Like, I, I saw that and I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it made her seem human and not robotic and detached for once, you know. I like that about her. We talked about that on Zoom. I didn't excerpt it. But Lisa was saying that too. And that's kind of how Lainey reported it was like, that's just human. And we never see her be unguarded like that. It made me like her a little bit that she would just roll her eyes. She smiled, too. <laughs> you know? Well, she just looked annoyed. Yeah. And I remember that time that she was in New York. It was a similar sort of situation where she was having to sit down and interact with, like, kids or young people. <laughs> she was wrapping Christmas gifts, and the cameraman said, wrap faster. And she rolled her eyes at them and, like, gave them a real disgusted look. I remember Yeah, that, that was funny. Like, that's uh -huh. fine. <laughs> Get pissed off a little bit. Show some personality, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the comments of the week. So you want to go first, you mind? <laughs> or I can go if you want. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So the full-length trailer for the Sex in the City update thing. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> and what is it called? <laughs> and just like that. So that series is coming out in the next week i think and the trailer is horrible it's so bad it has no <laughs> yeah but everybody go ahead sorry you read this comment yeah so mary commenter mary said how nice each of them got a friend of color Ugh. <laughs> i know there's plenty of people of color in secondary roles now yeah you know? yeah and it's true they gave each white woman her own little person of color to talk to <laughs> and solve her problems like the mm -hmm. magical trope yeah 
So my comment of the week is on the post about Tom Holland and Zendaya making their couple debut at the Balloon d'Or ceremony. And her dress, first of all, was gorgeous. I loved the back of it. She always looks so good, but... That was one of the best things that she's ever worn, though. It looked great on her. She can wear anything, but that did look really good. You know what it reminded me of? Do you remember this, like, iconic moment of Kate Blanchett in that uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier? It was black, and it had the gold accents on the back, just like the the Cavalli that Zendaya wore. No, I don't remember that one. She wore it, I think Kate wore it to the Oscars or the Golden Globes. Anyway, it reminded me a lot of that dress. It was great. It was such a pretty dress. So Lucia said, just look at his smile. He knows he's got it good. And this is my favorite type of celeb couple. No hiding, but no shouting it from the rooftops either. They're so adorable together. I want them to last. (laughs) I really like them. (laughs) Someone said, like, it's a young English professor and his hot American wife. (laughs) Like, that was the vibe. And it really was. It's like Like, rom-com vibes. (laughs) You know, he had his glasses on, and he just looked so cute and happy. And she was just, you know, smiling. I don't know. They're adorable. They I are love really them together. cute. I do, too. All right. Well, thanks for listening, bitches. Thanks, bitches. I was thinking of using that comment about Kate's um, stupid blouse today, looking like Jessica Fletcher. <laughs> Did you see that comment? No. That was pretty good. But I didn't pick that one because it came in later and I was like, I'll just use this one. Well, no. All right. On that post, you can leave this in the podcast as well. Okay. There was some Miss Marple slander. Someone said it looked like something Miss <laughs> Marple would wear. Miss Marple wouldn't be caught dead in that ugly blouse. Come She's on. More stylish than that. <laughs> Miss Marple is a lovely old lady and she wears like comfortable knits. Yeah, it's a very ugly blouse. It was nasty. (laughs) How does she find stuff that ugly and dated? Like (laughs) her mother in law dressed more modern than she did, you know? Well, like if she wants to wear that dated shit, I don't understand why she has to buy it new. Like go to any thrift store and buy like the cheap 70s, like authentic 70s version of that I mean, blouse. she could hire somebody to go to the thrift yeah. stores and do it for her because she's not going to do that. She can't be bothered to rifle through the stuff, but yeah. All right. Stop slandering Miss Marple. Okay, that's not your, you, just in general. That's just what you're going to end with now instead of you can count out whether you're dead. Stop slandering Miss Marple. <laughs> God damn it. Stop slandering Miss Marple. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Celebrity Podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. If you like us, please turn off your ad blocker when you visit our site. You can text us or leave a voicemail at 434-218-3219. Our music is from AA Alto, Maiden, and via Premium Beat and Sound of Picture. Thanks again.